Right. So, good evening, dear students. <coughs> I welcome you back again. <coughs> so, we are doing totally three sessions of YouTube today. One session I have completed at 6 p.m. And I am actually doing the neurocutaneous syndromes. And I am doing this particular neurocutaneous syndromes in three parts. The first part of the neurocutaneous syndrome has been finished at 6 p.m. Now, let me take up the second part of the neurocutaneous markers or neurocutaneous syndromes. But let me tell you, if you have missed the first part, don't worry. Second part and first part is no way connected to one another. Right? So, even though you have missed first part, directly listen to the second part of your neurocutaneous syndromes. Later, you can listen the first part of your neurocutaneous syndromes. <clears throat> now, let me just briefly tell you what I have discussed in the first part. What are actually the neurocutaneous syndromes? So, if you take this neurocutaneous syndromes, these are the main first part, last question. Uh, yes, Avinash, what is the, uh, is it like you are asking about Merlin gene? <clears throat> so, if you are asking me about the Merlin gene, let me tell you. Merlin gene, yeah. So, Merlin gene, this is also called as neurofibromin type 2 gene. Right? Both are same. The word Merlin or neurofibromatosis type 2 gene is one and the same. Right? This was the question which you people were asking me in the last session. And this Merlin gene will be different in different uh, individuals. In human beings, this Merlin gene, it is present on chromosome 22. Right? Whereas in rats, it is present on chromosome 17. So, Merlin gene or NF2 gene is one and the same. Is that clear, Aditya? May, uh, yes, I remember that you were asking me about this Merlin gene in the first part. <coughs> yes, Avinash. Uh, schwannoma in uh, type 1 neurofibromatosis. What have we discussed about the schwannomas in case of type 1 neurofibromatosis? Is it common or uncommon? Will it be there or will it not be there? Right? Schwannomas, it will be there. But that particular schwannoma is of the peripheral nerve. <clears throat> that particular, Avinash, the answer to your question, yes, it is uncommon. But schwannomas will be there, but that schwannomas will be of peripheral nerve. Okay? Now, so without uh, wasting much time, let me move ahead with the second part of your neurofibromatosis. Sorry, neurocutaneous syndromes. <clears throat> So, these are all your neurocutaneous syndromes, that is neurofibromatosis, tuberous sclerosis, von Hippel lindau disease, Sturge Weber syndrome and ataxia telangiectasia. So, what I finished in the first part is, right, sorry, right, so what I have finished in the first part is, I have finished this neurofibromatosis. Now, in this particular session, I will discuss tuberous sclerosis and as well as von hippel lindau disease, right? Tuberous sclerosis and von hippel lindau disease. Now, <clears throat> coming to your von hippel lindau syndrome, right? So, first one what I will discuss is about the von hippel lindau syndrome. So, if you take the same story again, I will discuss the theory and in the last we will do the multiple choice questions. So, if you take this von hippel lindau syndrome, one hippel lindau syndrome, it is one of the rare autosomal dominant disorder, <clears throat> right? This is one of the rare autosomal dominant disorder. Now, what are the characteristic tumors you will have in one hippel lindau syndrome? You will have the tumors which are formed due to abnormal angiogenesis, right? The tumors which are being formed due to abnormal angiogenesis. 
right now these tumors whichever are formed due to abnormal angiogenesis it could be benign tumors or malignant tumors right benign tumors or malignant tumors <clears throat> next followed by that we have the hemangioblastomas what are those that is craniospinal hemangioblastomas remember the presence of craniospinal hemangioblastomas these are the hallmark of your von hippel lindau disease <clears throat> right these are the hallmark tumors of your von hippel lindau disease next the other point is this hemangioblastomas whatever are there these are most frequently they are multiple in number they are not single they are multiple in number now where are they found <clears throat> right where are they found yes avinash you are correct very good they are mainly found within the cerebellum right and they are also seen within the spinal cord and even within the brain stem even within the brain stem <clears throat> now so what i will do is see i have said you mnemonic for type 1 neurofibromatosis that is your cave spot and i have said you mnemonic for your type 2 numero uh, type 2 neurofibromatosis that is miss you now let me also give you a mnemonic for your von hippel lindau disease also what are the various tumors so what is von hippel lindau it's a rare autosomal dominant disease there will be abnormal angiogenesis resulting in tumors that would be benign or malignant and not only that there will be a hallmark tumors there is craniospinal hemangioblastomas and this hemangioblastomas they are multiple in number mainly originating from the cerebellum spinal cord and as well as the brain stem now now let me discuss right let me discuss what are the various other tumors in case of your von hippel lindau syndrome in the form of a mnemonic and what is that mnemonic that particular mnemonic is you are peeping through a car right so that is <clears throat> car peep these are the tumors in your von hippel lindau you take c c stands for cerebellar hemangioma right cerebellar hemangioma then you take the word a a stands for angioblastoma what angioblastoma it is retinal angioblastoma <clears throat> then you take the word r r stands for renal cell carcinoma you take the word p p stands for pheochromocytoma you take the word e e stands for the tumor or the nodule coming from the epididymis <clears throat> that is called as epididymal tumor or epididymal nodule then you have one more e the one more e is your endolymphatic sac tumor right endo lymphatic sac tumor then you take the word p the word p stands for pancreatic the word p stands for pancreatic tumor or pancreatic cyst okay so you are th these are the tumors like what you see in case of von hippel lindau that is car p next now out of all these tumors right out of all these tumors whatever we have discussed in case of von hippel lindau there are certain characteristic tumors and there are certain uncommon tumors now what are the characteristic tumors and what are the uncommon tumors let me discuss so you take the von hippel lindau right what is the mode of inheritance autosomal dominant type of inheritance and i said you that the individual will have the characteristic tumors and some other tumors that is uncommon tumors now 
first let me tell you the characteristic tumors what did i tell you the hallmark tumors the hallmark tumor is your hemangioblastoma right hemangioblastoma it is the hallmark tumor now which hemangioblastoma it is the hemangioblastoma of cerebellum that is cerebellar hemangioblastoma then retinal hemangioblastoma then spinal hemangioblastoma so hemangioblastomas these are the characteristic tumors in case of von hippel lindau disease whereas you take other tumors the other tumors include renal cell carcinoma then pheochromocytoma then pancreatic endocrine tumors next adrenal carcinomas then the benign cyst of the kidney liver epididymis all right so these are the characteristic tumors and we have what is called other tumors now you should remember that these individuals with von hippel lindau disease they have what is called polycythemia now can anyone tell me why they will have this polycythemia why patients of von hippel lindau has polycythemia <clears throat> any one of you right let me explain you that see polycythemia is because of excessive erythropoietin production right excessive erythropoietin production why the excessive erythropoietin production is by your renal cell carcinoma right excessive erythropoietin production is by renal cell carcinoma and as well as your hemangioblastoma so there will be ectopic erythropoietin production right there will be ectopic erythropoietin production now so this is about your characteristic tumors uncommon tumors in case of von hippel lindau disease now let me discuss the diagnostic criteria right let me discuss the diagnostic criteria in case of von hippel lindau disease so if you take this diagnostic criteria you have three important manifestations number 1 cns manifestations number 2 hemangioblastomas right hemangioblastomas number 3 presence of the family history right presence of the family history now what will be the cns manifestations just now we have discussed that is your angioblastomas and particularly your cerebellar angioblastomas and not only that even retinal hemangioblastomas right even your retinal hemangioblastomas okay so this is the cns part of the diagnostic criteria then you take the hemangioblastomas this could be from renal this would be from pancreas this would be from the liver that is hepatic this would be pheochromocytoma right or this would be your renal cell carcinoma so it is not that like all of them should be there right same avinash hemangioblastoma and angioblastoma is one and the same there is no difference but here it is cns should be there definitely and here it is the hemangioblastomas of other organs right like kidney pancreas liver and adrenal medulla so out of this any one should be there right out of this any one should be there next what is the family history there should be the family history of hemangioblastoma right there should be family history of hemangioblastoma then there should be some of the visceral changes there should be family history of pheochromocytoma or there should be family history of renal cell carcinoma right family history of renal cell carcinoma now what is the characteristic tumor i have discussed so this is your diagnostic criteria cns manifestations hemangioblastomas of the other organs and family history of the tumors now the characteristic tumor what did i tell you the characteristic tumor i have discussed that 
द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सेरिबेलर हिमेंजियो ब्लास्टोमा राइट सेरिबेलर हिमेंजियो ब्लास्टोमा नाउ लेट मी टेल यू द स्टोरी ऑफ योर सेरिबेलर हिमेंजियो ब्लास्टोमा रिमेंबर दिस इज अ बिनाइन नियोप्लाज्म राइट दिस इज अ बिनाइन नियोप्लाज्म now what will be the clinical manifestation of your cerebellar hemangioblastoma the clinical manifestation include because it is originating from the cerebellum these individuals they will have cerebellar dysfunction now this cerebellar hemangioblastoma will obstruct the flow of the csf cerebellar hemangioblastoma will obstruct the flow of the csf and that will result in hydrocephalus and what did i tell you the hemangioblastomas can be ectopic source of erythropoietin production and that is the reason why they can have polycythemia so these are the manifestations of your cerebellar hemangioblastoma so out of the entire tumors of your von hippel lindau the most common cns manifestation is your cerebellar hemangioblastoma all right now the next question to you is the next question to you is where is the location of your von hippel lindau disease or von hippel lindau tumors where is the location the location of your von hippel lindau syndrome is mainly infratentorial right so we have what is called within the brain tentorium cerebelli so there are some tumors which are supratentorial and some of the tumors infratentorial if you take von hippel lindau it is your infratentorial whereas you take type 1 neurofibromatosis that is neurofibromatosis type 1 it is both infratentorial and as well as supratentorial location of the tumors will be there whereas even in type 2 you have both infratentorial and supratentorial location of the tumors will be there then you take the other neurocutaneous syndrome that is your sturge weber syndrome sturge weber syndrome it is supratentorial it is very easy to remember right s for sturge weber syndrome s for supratentorial okay whereas von hippel lindau i said you it is infratentorial more common compared to that of supratentorial right compared to that of supratentorial and we have one important the uh, neurocutaneous syndrome that is tuberous sclerosis tuberous sclerosis again this is also supratentorial right supratentorial location of the tumors okay so this is about the distribution of your tumors right von hippel lindau syndrome infratentorial more commonly located than supratentorial then neurofibromatosis type 1 both infra and supra type 2 both infra and supra sturge weber syndrome s for sturge weber s for supra tentorial and tuberous sclerosis it is supra tentorial location of your tumors so this completes the discussion of your von hippel lindau disease right so i'll just summarize von hippel lindau in the form of a mnemonic and what is that mnemonic car p c stands for cerebellar hemangioblastomas A stands for angioblastomas. What angioblastomas? Retinal angioblastomas. Then you take R, renal cell carcinoma. P is your pheochromocytoma. E is your ependymal nodule and tumor. And E stands for endolymphatic sac tumor. And P stands for pancreatic endocrine tumor and as well as the cyst. So this is about the story of your von Hippel Lindau syndrome. Now, followed by this, we will move on to the next one that is the tuberous sclerosis. right tuberous sclerosis now you take this tuberous sclerosis so what are we discussing now we are discussing the neurocutaneous markers or neurocutaneous syndromes out of which what all we have discussed neurofibromatosis we have discussed and von hippel lindau i have discussed and the third one i am discussing now that is tuberous sclerosis now when you sh when should you suspect tuberous sclerosis remember if the individual is having seizures along with seizures if the individual has hypopigmented macule the presence of hypopigmented macule along with your seizures and mental retardation this will suggest 
the diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis. Right? This will suggest the diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis. Yeah, yes, uh, when technical, you are correct. It is also called bone wellage disease. Hmm? You are correct. Right. Coming to your the what are all the various tumors in the tuberous sclerosis? Again, same story. I will give you a mnemonic. Remember, in tuberous sclerosis, you have what is called hematomas. We have retinal hematomas. Now, that is what is your mnemonic now. You take the word H. Right? If you take this word H, H stands for presence of hematoma. Right? H stands for presence of hematoma. Then you take the word A. A stands for adenoma sebaceum. I will show you this adenoma sebaceum. Then you take the word M. M stands for mental retardation. Remember not mitral regurgitation, mental retardation. Right. And you take the word A. A stands for ash leaf spots. Right. And you take the word R. R stands for the tumor which is originating from the heart. That is your rhabdomyoma. Right? Rhabdomyoma. Right? Then you take the word T. T stands for presence of tubers. Where the presence of cortical tubers, that is within the brain. You take the word O. O stands for optic hamartomas. Right? Optic hamartomas. And here the M stands for mitral regurgitation. So we have mental retardation and as well as mitral regurgitation also. A stands for astrocytoma. And S stands for presence of seizures. Presence of seizures. So these are your tumors in case of tuberous sclerosis. Right? So the mnemonic is hamartoma. Hamartoma, adenoma, sebaceum, mental retardation, ash leaf nodules, then rhabdomyoma, tubers, cortical tubers, optical hematoma, mitral regurgitation, astrocytoma, and as well as the seizures. Now, if you take this tuberous sclerosis, remember, tuberous sclerosis is also an autosomal dominant disorder. Right? Tuberous sclerosis is also an autosomal dominant disorder. And in tuberous sclerosis, there are three important manifestations. What are those? Number one, cutaneous manifestations. Number two, neurological features. And we have some other features. What are those other features? I will discuss. Now, first of all, let me discuss the cutaneous manifestations. Cutaneous manifestations, there are five cutaneous manifestations. First one is your hypopigmented macule or your ash leaf spot. Right? This particular hypopigmented macule or ash leaf spot, remember this will be asked as an image based question. Right? Hypopigmented macule or ash leaf spot, it is present in almost 90% of individuals. Right? This is present in almost 90% of individuals. And these are, why it is called ash leaf? Because these are larger lesions. That is why these are called ash leaves. Okay? Next. Next, second, so one is your ash leaf spots or hypopigmented macule. Second one, if you take the dermatological manifestation, they have what is called shagreen patches. Why is it word called shagreen? Because if you take this lesion, this will give you a roughened appearance. This will give you a roughened appearance. And that is the reason why this is called shag green patch. And what is the shape of it? It will be oval shaped. And most of it will be of skin color. But only very important point is roughened appearance. That is very, very important point about your shag green. Next. The other dermatological manifestation, you have it in the face and that is called as adenoma sebaceum. What is this? These are basically angiofibromas that will begin within the childhood. Right? What are these? These are angiofibromas that will begin within the childhood. And mainly, which skin is affected here? The facial skin is affected. Right? Facial skin is affected. Okay? And when do they develop? 
this adenoma sebaceum they develop around the age group of 4 to 6 years of age and how are they if you take the distribution of them they are basically tiny nodules and what do they re resemble they resemble that of an acne right they resemble that of an acne that is your adenoma sebaceum so ash leaf nodules chagrin patches adenoma sebaceum then you take the next one that is called periangual fibroma you can see here this is your periangual fibroma this periangual fibroma this is more common and it is also given by another name what is the other name of this this is also called coenens tumor right this is also called coenens tumor so periangual fibroma is another feature of your tuberous sclerosis and these individuals they will have this is also called coenens tumor that is periangual fibroma not only surrounding the nail let me tell you they will also have facial angiofibromas they will also have facial angiofibromas you can see in this picture along with adenoma sebaceum the individual is also having angiofibromas all right last one the last cutaneous marker is your caflu spots the last cutaneous marker is caflu spots okay now i'll just revise all your cutaneous manifestations so what did i tell you in case of tuberous sclerosis three important manifestations cutaneous neurological and other features you take the cutaneous number one ash leaf spots large lesions present in 90 percentage of individuals sharp green patches they should have rough appearance adenoma sebaceum present over the face and it will begin around the age group of four to six years and they are very tiny nodules resemble that of an acne peringual fibroma they are also called conan's tumors then facial angiofibromas are the other dermatological manifestations and lastly the presence of your caflu spots so these are your cutaneous manifestations what you will see in patients with the tuberous sclerosis now let me discuss the cns manifestations right let me discuss the cns manifestations if you take the cns manifestations the most common cns manifestation is your seizures okay now any of you tell me seizures associated with tuberous sclerosis what is the drug of choice what is the drug of choice because what type of seizures they do they have they have what is called infantile spasms now infantile spasms associated with tuberous sclerosis what is the drug of choice any one of you not ACTH no ACTH should be given if there is only infantile spasms only infantile spasms then you give ACTH yes Gangadhar Dhananjoy both of you are correct so if it is infantile spasm plus tuberous sclerosis then the answer should be Vigabatrin right the answer should be Vigabatrin not your ACTH right Nine. It is not like if ACTH is resistant, then we go back in. ACTH is covered now. When will you give? If infantile spasms only are there, then you give ACTH. Whereas drug of choice with infantile spasms associated with tuberous sclerosis, the drug of choice is we go back in. Take this point. Okay. Then, then followed by this manifestation seizures. The other CNS manifestation is mental retardation we have discussed this already mental retardation it is present in almost 50 percentage of individuals right 50 percentage of individuals next you take the imaging if you do imaging here they will have a characteristic nodule that is called cortical tuber right that is called cortical tuber okay right let me just show you that cortical tuber yes so this is your cortical tuber right this is your cortical tuber all right next next to this these individuals they will have these cortical tubers which are originating they, which are present there they are basically sub ependymal nodules right 
right sub ependymal nodules and these sub ependymal nodules they undergo calcification they undergo calcification so once you see that in the imaging you will see the presence of your cortical tuber so cortical tuber is a very characteristic imaging manifestation what you will see in patients with the tuberous sclerosis so what all we have discussed now we have discussed cutaneous manifestations neurological manifestations now let me discuss the other features let me discuss the other features now if you take the other features in these individuals right if you take the other features in these individuals which is here they include the presence of renal lesions and what is that renal lesion that is the presence of angio or this can be in the form of cyst or angiomyolipomas right angiomyolipomas next they can also have cardiac lesion and these cardiac lesions include rhabdomyomas that is a tumor which is originating from the cardiac muscle that is rhabdomyomas then you take the pulmonary lesions the pulmonary lesions they include lymphangiomyomatosis right lymphangiomyomatosis all right oh, where is it going just one second yeah so right so renal lesion then cardiac lesion then pulmonary lesion then followed by that you also have the lesion within the eye the lesion within the eye that is called retinal hamartomas right retinal hamartomas then you take the skeletal lesions skeletal lesions they include the formation of cyst within the bone right formation of cyst within the bone or formation of cyst within the finger or toe so these are your three manifestations in tuberous sclerosis cutaneous cns and other lesions other lesions are renal lesions cardiac lesions pulmonary lesions lesions within the eye and as well as the lesion within the bone that is skeletal lesions now this tuberous sclerosis this is characterized by a triad right this is characterized by a triad what is a triad this particular triad it includes the presence of seizures mental retardation and adenoma sebaceum this is a triad in tuberous sclerosis so if the child is presenting to you with unexplained seizures and along with that there is presence of your hypopigmented macules immediately think of tuberous sclerosis right think of tuberous sclerosis all right next i'll tell you one more point related to tuberous sclerosis so so what was the triad the triad was seizures mental retardation adenoma sebaceum and if there is unexplained seizures with hypopigmented macule in a child think of tuberous sclerosis now the other point about the tuberous sclerosis is this particular tuberous sclerosis it is associated with aw stands for associated with it is associated with what is called segca segca what is this segca that is sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma right sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma right this sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma these are benign tumors right these are benign tumors they are associated with segca but it is not always right it is not always okay and other point is i said you it is a sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma now where do they originate from remember they originate from 
द वॉल ऑफ लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल सॉरी द वॉल ऑफ लेटरल वेंट्रिकल विथ इन द ब्रेन वेर एग्जैक्टली नियर द फोरामिन ऑफ मनरो right near foramen of munro okay so remember this point so your tuberous sclerosis is associated with segka what is segka subependymal giant cell astrocytoma what type of tumor is it it is a benign tumor and it is not always present and where is it most commonly located it is located in the wall of lateral ventricle near the foramen of munro now what is this composed of this this tumor is composed of your giant cells this tumor is composed of your giant cells now these are benign tumors already i have said you what will be how do you treat surgical resection gross resection of the tumor is the treatment of choice then what will be the imaging studies imaging studies is a image based question for you in case of segka what is segka subependymal giant cell astrocytoma now if you take the imaging studies in these individuals this is the image what is this image called this is called candle dribbling appearance right candle dripping appearance right candle dripping appearance now you can see here this is the candle which is dripping down right candle dripping appearance okay so where is the most common site of your segka the most common site of your segka it is from the wall of the lateral ventricle near the foramen of munro so this is about your tuberous sclerosis and von hippel lindau syndrome now we will move on to some of the multiple choice questions all right yeah answer this which of the following is not seen in tuberous sclerosis which of the following is not seen in tuberous sclerosis any one of you hmm white matter migration lines hemant okay avinash d ependymoma okay so right so i got the answers from avinash akash and maya hmm all of you are correct so you will not see ependymoma in tuberous sclerosis you will not see ependymoma in tuberous sclerosis remember this point now remember in case of tuberous sclerosis we have major features and minor features already i have discussed all the tumors now let me just segregate which are the major tumors which are the minor tumors let me segregate you take the major features major features include facial angiofibromas then shagreen patch hyma hypomelanotic macule retinal nodular hematoma cortical tuber subependymal nodule subependymal giant cell astrocytoma cardiac rhabdomyoma lymphangiomyomatosis this is pulmonary manifestation we have discussed this then renal angiomyolipomas right all these already i have discussed but i am telling you that these are the major features then some of you were getting confused with the uh, white matter migration lines white matter migration lines present they are the minor manifestations you see this migration lines now which are your minor manifestations presence of hamartomatous rectal polyp R rectal polyp bone cyst migration lines gingival fibromas retinal acromic patch coffetti skin lesion what is coffetti coffetti is like pieces pieces presence of the skin lesions in the form of pieces pieces here and there that is called coffetti skin lesions and then multiple renal cyst so these are your minor manifestations what you will see in tuberous sclerosis right then in case of tuberous sclerosis you also have criteria what is that so i have said you major and as well as minor now when do we call definite tuberous sclerosis 
we call definite tuberous sclerosis when there is presence of two major manifestations or one major plus two minor manifestations that is definite tuberous sclerosis then when do we use the word possible tuberous sclerosis we use possible tuberous sclerosis either one major right one major feature or two or more minor features right two or more minor features this is your possible tuberous sclerosis right now let me go back to the question now right let me go back to the question so what was our question which is not the feature of tuberous sclerosis giant cell astrocytoma i have said you that is segca white matter migration lines minor features subependymal nodules they are nothing but your giant cell astrocytomas so which is not seen ependymoma is not the feature of your the tuberous sclerosis all right next let me show you one more multiple choice question yeah answer this all of the following are the true about von hippel lindau syndrome except all of the following are true about von hippel lindau syndrome except multiple tumors are uncommon hemangiopericytomas are seen in craniospinal axis supratentorial lesions are seen tumors of schwann cells are seen all of the following are true about von hippel lindau syndrome except right i am surprised that everyone is going with c i am surprised that everyone is going with c let me just go back to the slide see what was that i i was teaching you right i was teaching you that if you take the location of your tumors i said yeah is it the same slide yes now now come to this particular point if you take von hippel lindau syndrome i said that infratentorial locations are very common but i did not tell you that supratentorial locations you don't have the tumors even in supratentorial you have the tumors even in the supratentorial you have the tumors but what is the answer we will go back to the question now again hmm now now you answer this question now all of the following are true about von hippel lindau except any one of you are tumors of the schwann cells huh? nine see you see the answer is the first option multiple tumors are uncommon is completely an incorrect statement very good maya excellent you are the only student who have answered this question very good right you will be the topper in the next neat pg exam okay so all of the following are true about your von hippel lindau except so that is your multiple tumors are uncommon is an incorrect statement why why because you see here von hippel lindau you have the cns hemangioblastomas renal cell carcinomas pheochromocytomas islet cell tumors of the pancreas endolymphatic sac tumors renal pancreatic and epididymal cysts so you have like multiple tumors which are present in your von hippel lindau so how can you just take out this answer multiple tumors are uncommon is an incorrect option there everyone did you understand the explanation or not now some of you are opting for the schwannomas let me tell you the schwannomas of the sciatic nerve 
schwannomas of the sciatic nerve they are seen in association with von hippel lindau they are seen in association with von hippel lindau okay right so now i'll just go back what i have discussed in this session i tell you okay i think i have missed some imaging study yes yeah right so in this particular session i have discussed tuberous sclerosis i have discussed von hippel lindau disease we are left out with two more neurocutaneous syndromes that is sturge weber syndrome and ataxia telangiectasia right so i will come back with the sturge weber syndrome and ataxia telangiectasia at 10 o'clock session so we will meet again at 10 o'clock and i will complete the sturge weber and ataxia telangiectasia and thereby your entire neurocutaneous syndromes will be finished right so how was the session guys did you understand and uh, was the session useful right so very good thank you very much so i'll come back again at 10 o'clock for delivering the remaining part of your neurocutaneous syndromes so thank you very much and see you at 10 o'clock